You are listening to MCC Geopod, the geopolitical podcast of the Maciej Corvinas Collegium, the largest talent management institute in Hungary. If you want to know more about our mission, please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en or check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. For interesting articles and analysis of our professors and students, look up our knowledge base at korvinek.hu slash en. Good morning to our listeners. Our guest today is Song Li Lei, professor at School of Political Science and International Relations, Deputy Director of European Research Center, researcher of German Research Center of Tongji University. She has published more than 30 articles at academic periodicals in Chinese and English, two monographs on EU diplomacy, and four collections of papers on China-EU relations. Good morning, Dr. Professor, and welcome to our studio. Professor Song, could you please talk a little about your publications, your, your research? Uh, thank you, and thank you, uh, Kata. And uh, it's really great honor to be invited by the MCC Visiting Research Fellow. I have heard I'm the first uh, visiting professors from China. And uh, my research is devoted to the China-European relations. And uh, hope that I can say uh, some, some things uh, you are con- 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 uh, curious uh, about. Mm. And my... Publications uh, is uh, focus on the China-EU relations uh, in Chinese and in some English uh, papers. Usually, I uh, PhD thesis is talk about European neighborhood policy. Uh, why Chinese people will concerned about European neighborhood policy? Maybe you will think. Yeah, because in China, we have very complicated uh, environment uh, to deal with our neighbors. We have the 14 land neighbors and the six mar- mar- maritime neighbors. Until now, you know, the territory disputes with China and India are still in negotiation. And uh, how the European, they choose their uh, good friendly neighborhood policies and build these friendly circles. Uh, I think many experience is learned. And uh, I do this research and to maybe find some uh, suggestion solutions uh, for the China's uh, ways uh, to deal with its neighbors. And I write this thesis in uh, 2009, and two years later, it has been published in China and then supported uh, for the uh, Shanghai inter, uh, uh, the public academic support. Uh, so I get this free publication opportunities. Uh, I think this is the first step I have uh, devoted myself to China EU studies. And then, in the university career, I grew from the assistant professor and uh, then now is a full professor. And most of my teach for the uh, BA student is China uh, EU relations and also the European Union uh, and the European Union's integration. And also I teach the English course uh, for China EU relations, uh, because in my universities we have double master degree from Chinese uh, university side and with the Italian uh, colleagues, the Dulin universities. Italian students, they have one year opportunities to exchange uh, in Shanghai, in my home universities, and write the thesis uh, guided from the Italian supervisor and with Chinese supervisor together. And finally, they will get this uh, double uh, diplomas. Uh, we have promoted this uh, academic change, uh, not only with Italians, but also in progress uh, with the uh, UK uh, colleagues. And uh, in the near future, I think that maybe MCC and some Hungarian university can join us and have this exchange and uh, uh, student uh, uh, diploma uh, programs together. Mm. 
that would be an outstanding opportunity for our students here at MCC because we have some opportunities to study in the European Union and also some to study in the U.S., but I haven't heard of any opportunities here at MCC to study in Asia, so that would be a really great idea. Professor Song, the European Union has quite a hostile view of China. In my point of view, this derives from the ages of the Cold War and sadly has not changed much despite the fact that China has indeed become a global superpower, and not only economically, of course. How do you perceive the EU's point of view of China? Uh, yes, I think uh, you mentioned uh, is right. Uh, especially uh, from the epidemic year happened uh, to 2020 mm -hmm. and uh, the Ukraine uh, crisis uh, broken, it's more and more complicated for China and the EU relations. On the one side, they have competitions and uh, these competitions increased. Uh, some European nation states, they have the protectionism policies, especially in the trade and the investment areas, and the cognitive gap between China and the EU is uh, enlargement. And uh, on the other side, uh, China is still uh, one of the important uh, economic partners and uh, market for the European people, especially in the... Uh, uh, digital transitions and uh, green cooperation areas, they still have many things in common. And uh, we know that uh, the uh, European strategic autonomy is on the list, and the European people, they want to become the independent, uh, uh, even in the geopolitical political considerations. In, in summary, the China EU, they have uh, more commons than their disputes, they should now consider the seriously to find some pragmatic and reasonable uh, new partnership uh, and to uh, keep the world peace and uh, stability. Uh, that's my short comments here. Professor Song, how does China view the European Union? Are we viewed as a considerable power in the world or as a political union drowning in constant and deep crisis? Because you, you mentioned the war in Ukraine. That's just one of the crises the European Union has faced in the last years, let's be honest, because there was the migration crisis and with the COVID, with the masks and the vaccines. So what is the European Union? Is it something powerful or something... Well, not so powerful. Um, we understand now the European is, uh, has uh, uh, tried to uh, find its international players, uh, try to uh, find it uh, uh, strategic uh, st autonomous ways. European is not uh, uh, want to only play a uh, trade and economic uh, uh, rules. Uh, it wanted to become the uh, uh, geopolitical, political powers. And uh, even we know that uh, the Ukraine crisis is really uh, activities, uh, uh, corporations and uh, the NATO uh, alliance. But the, the interest between United States and the European Union is, to is not, uh, uh, it's not uh, the equally, yeah. They, uh, they will have something in common, but they also have something different. And uh, the European unions, they should find their independent uh, policies, even considered to the China. And whether uh, after the epidemic, uh, how to recover economies and also how to co-governance about the security challenges such as climate change, uh, the digital transitions and the uh, uh, green transitions, they still have something uh, together. And I should mention the Chinese President Xi Jinping, he has given uh, remarks in a College of Europe in Bruges, and he has speech uh, there to mention uh, the four keywords to summarize China and EU relations, peace and uh, reform, uh, growth, uh, civilian, uh, these four words. And uh, to explain this, the China and the EU, they are both the peaceful powers, the two big markets and the two uh, great civilians 
and China and the EU, I think they shared the, the responsibility uh, to guide the world toward the peace. And what the Chinese say is that uh, the uh, the people community uh, the, the people communities with the shared futures is needed more dialogue and more talks, especially face to face. So I really care about these opportunities after one uh, one thousand years without uh, uh, international uh, trip. This is the first time uh, from 2020 I come to Europe and to talk with uh, professors, students here uh, together and to through the communications uh, to uh, friendly uh, talk our concerns and our difference. We don't avoid uh, to this is uh, sensitive issues because uh, we don't worry about the critical opinions as a big powers, we think that we should accept it, more different voices, uh, and to learn, listen, uh, and to listen it. And now in my thinking, uh, the China and the EU, they don't uh, have the geopolitical or political uh, confrontations. And uh, China's economic uh, uh, is occupied around uh, uh, 80 80 percent uh, in the world GDP. So the China's economic cap stability, cap development is really beneficial for the recovery of the world economy after the epidemic, and also recovery to the welfare uh, of the European peoples. This is uh, opportunities. This is uh, this is not uh, a threat. Uh, that is my thinking. And when we talk about uh, the Europe, usually we will begin to think about uh, uh, economic uh, economic corporations, uh, because in the nineteen seventy five, when China has built diplomatic uh, relations with the European uh, communities, uh, it's, it's begin in the long run uh, to treat each other as the greatest uh, trade partners. And from the 2004 to 2019, the EU is, as a group, is the biggest trade partners with China. And from the 2020 until now, the China has become the uh, biggest uh, uh, trade uh, trade partners uh, for the uh, for the goods, uh, and also in the global government's levels, they are cooperated partners, as I've mentioned, the climate change and how to do the uh, co-governance and the uh, contract of the Par uh, Paris, uh, it is signed to deal with the climate issues. And it is signed uh, due to the cooperations between China and Europe. Uh, remember the Trumper in uh, uh, four years in uh, as a president uh, during that period, America had uh, retreated uh, this this Paris tra uh, treaties, uh, so the China and the EU they keep their cooperation for green uh, transition. I think is really really important, uh, really eminent. Yeah, Professor, I completely agree with what you said about the healing power of China's economy. I think it's a great point. Um, you mentioned trade and investment more times during your speech, and I have a question in regards to that. So I'm sure you, you are aware that the EU is debating about the suspension of 7.5 billion euros in, in funding for Hungary. And this loss of this so-called battle would, would also result in the loss of investor confidence across the globe, according to the economists. Would China also say no to any upcoming investments in Hungary? Yes, uh, we have paid attention to this uh, this. Uh, dispute opinions between uh, Hungary government with the uh, European unions. Um, but uh, you, you understand for China deal with its foreign policies, usually we will mention the five permanent uh, uh, principles. The first, uh, what we say, don't interfere the other countries' internal affairs. We understand they have the disputes uh, between the Hungarian government with the European unions, but I trust the Hungarian people is really smart 
and they know their choices, and they know their um, their fate is catched by their own peoples, uh, not uh, from the politicians in Brussels. And I will read the uh, opinions from both sides, but as a Chinese, we don't want to make any judgment. And also, for Chinese considered the Hungarians, it's a very uh, good position in uh, Central Europe. And uh, uh, for the China's investment in uh, Hungarians, we will consider this is uh, one of the pivot countries along the Belt and the Road. And uh, China and the Hungarians already signed this strategic partnership already. Mm, such as the Hungarian, I heard, is get the one of the biggest investment uh, just this year. Uh, and this is uh, the uh, industries. It is uh, maybe become the one of the biggest uh, China's green investment uh, in entire European market. Uh, this is a battery. Uh, uh, industrial, uh, yeah. I think it's really good for the Hungarian economic development. And remember, the Hungarian government, they have very open to economic cooperation with China. When the first China want to um, Talk about the Belt and Road policies with European peoples. Hungary is the first countries who stand out and to sign this Belt and Road initiatives with the Chinese government in Central and East European regions. I remember even the very difficult past three years, the China Hungarians, this trade volumes is increased. And even in 2021, uh, this bilateral trade volumes compared with the last year is increased more than 30, uh, 34%, more than 34%. I think that what the Hungarians will never forget about China is that how in 2020, when the COVID was just raging on the continent, China was the only country at first who gave us masks, those respiratory mechanisms, and also vaccines as well. Most countries in the EU said no to Chinese vaccines for some for some reason that I cannot understand. But as, as our prime minister said back then, and as our minister for foreign affairs said, without China, I think the COVID crisis in Hungary would have been much, much worse. So Professor Sung, um, how would you describe Chinese-Hungarian relations at the moment? Is this merely a friendship between the two countries? And if yes, could the two nations create a tighter bond in the future, like an economically tighter and uh, and better, more effective bond? Yeah, that's a, it's very uh, important questions. Uh, to increase the China and the Hungarian relations, I think uh, it's not only the official and the economic uh, levels, and about, but also to understand the Hungarians' uh, its own policies, their own choices, such as I have read one article in talk about the Hungarians' uh, its open door policies. I think this is really important to, to further uh, the, the pathways for China and Hungarian corporations. We understand that this open door policies uh, is uh, one of the pragmatic uh, uh, diplomacy uh, solutions. Uh, this is not in a short uh, uh, considerations, but it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's in long run considerations. It will think that this is due to the results of globalizations and the results of the, maybe we see that the uh, Eastern rise and the decline of the West. Uh -huh. So the, we trust the Hungarian government, they will continue to put the trade relations and the cultural communications with China and build its, uh, this, uh, this uh, strategic partnership with China. Uh, yeah. This, and uh, fully understand this uh, Hungarian's Eastern open door policies, we can sure that the stabilities between our bilateral relations 
uh, in the next uh, maybe five, ten, uh, blah, 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 in the, in the long run. And it's really increased the Chinese businessmen and Chinese enterprises, their confidence uh, to continue the, their uh, economic cooperations in these regions in Hungarian. Uh, I think all this is important. So not only officials, this uh, strategic links, but also uh, we should fully understand uh, what the Hungarian government they want. Uh, one last question, Dr. Song. What is the perception of Hungary in China? Because in the European Union, we are the black sheep country, the naughty child. And one member of the European Parliament, Ms. Dalbus Corfield, once said that our country is in fact an, and I quote, illiberal democracy. What is the perception of our country on the Asian continent? What do the Chinese people think about Hungarians? Because as for one, I've never been to China. I've only heard stories about how Chinese people are very kind and diligent, that they work a lot and they're also friendly and open-minded. So what do the people think about us? And what does the Chinese government think about the Hungarians? I know this is a complex question, but I just want to to hear, and I think our, our listeners also want to hear, what the Chinese people and what does the government think about us? I think this question is really important. And on official levels, the China thinks that Hungary is a pivotal country along the Belt and Road, and the strategic partners is already uh, proved this point. And for the academic levels, uh, maybe I can say something. Um, my major is international relations. Maybe I can uh, say something to Hungarians' uh, foreign policies. Uh, welcome your comments. Uh, because Hungarian compared with the other uh, big powers in European unions, it's, uh, it's a small size, yeah, small size countries. And its foreign policies is to join uh, the uh, regional and uh, sub-regional organizations. This is their first considerations. On the regional levels, become the member of the NATOs is to uh, guarantee their safe uh, security, uh, to guarantee their security. And for the join to the European Union, is get economic support, uh, support. In the sub-regional levels, uh, Hungarians really actively to speak their own voices under the Visegrad uh, planned uh, form, uh, Visegrad group. And also they has uh, say something and join actively such as 3C initi initiative and the central uh, five, central five country. On the Visegrad group, it want to show that Hungarian has its nation state's uh, characteristics and also the characters as uh, uh, countries from the central, central Europe. And to uh, organize with the other members in uh, Visegrad group to uh, increase this region's influence in the UN, and also, uh, as I mentioned, this open door policies, it will talk about uh, the economic and economic, economic and the security powers. Uh, they will more and more uh, not only talk about the transatlantic region, but also talk about the uh, Indo-Pacific regions and also to face the uh, global challenges. The Hungarian government had this all round open policies. And for Asia, it's a true this open door policies uh, to purchase its own economic uh, interests and uh, devoted their countries' trade relations mutually uh, with uh, the other countries, uh, not only with the East, but also with the West, uh, with the South. Uh, is it uh, very pragmatic considerations? Uh, we know that such as uh, open to the north uh, from uh, urban government mentioned it will also open to the Latin America. Uh, so we understand this is all around the diplomacies and the purchase its own economic considerations. Uh, uh, this interest uh, is first. And also for the Hungarians' uh, its image to the Chinese peoples, I, to be told very frankly, and uh, uh, 
uh, Mars from the Mars media's, uh, they say that the Hungarian is really uh, positive for the China uh, cooperation, uh, China Hungarian cooperations. But for the young generations, their knowledge is to Hungarian is still very limited. They know the Czech Republic because one of the Chinese famous uh, uh, singer has a has a song uh, talk about the Czech Republic, this Braga Square. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very popular in the young generation. They know it's a romantic place. And it was a, a Bosimia's style. But for the Hungarian, I think they know it's still very limited. Even the Hungarian government scholarship is already open for the my university student and for the, the other regions. Um, maybe they don't very familiar. Uh, if they have choices, uh, they will still think about France and Germany. It's a really urgent time to ask the Hungarian, Hungarian styles and the Hungarian image to be known by, uh, by, Chan, by Chinese. Uh, especially young generations. Uh, I think this is uh, a basement uh, to uh, the further corporations. Yes, Dr. Song, I completely agree with what you said. And I think that in international relations, very much depends on diplomatic gestures. And we can mention, of course, the masks, the vaccines, the visits between the two countries, the idea of the Fudan University and the great economic investments coming from China, the scholarships between the two countries, and so on. So our guest was Dr. Song Lule, university professor and visiting fellow at MCC. Thank you for your kind time and your expertise on the topic. We pray that the Chinese-Hungarian relations will continue to flourish in the future. It was great having you here on the podcast. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Kata. And hope that in the near future, uh, and more Hungarian tourists can in Shanghai. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you for listening to this MCC Geopod episode. For further media content, please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en, or look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to read more by our professors and students, check out our knowledge base at corvinec.hu slash en.